Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in. I'm Lauren and in this video I'm going to share with you how I used this pleasy or pleated fabric to make really lovely easy elasticated waist skirt. So if you follow me on Instagram you'll have seen that last week I posted that I was going to make this skirt and it was very much requested that I made a tutorial for it as well. Now I do want to start off by saying I'm really sorry but the exact fabric that I have used to make this version, the pink one, we have actually sold out of now because it's so close to Christmas we can't get any more unfortunately but we do have some of the olive colourway, let me just check, yeah it's the olive colourway so it's like sort of greeny colourway like this so we do still have some of this in stock but I hope that the video tutorial is still useful for you, it might be that you have pleasy fabric already or you got some from us in the past or maybe you get it from elsewhere on the internet of course um, and I hope it gives you some inspiration for making a really quick and easy skirt. So first of all a little bit about this type of fabric, it does tend to be made from polyester so it's a, synthe a synthetic fabric and it gets pleated um, usually like it gets set at quite high temperatures, don't totally know the technicalities of how it's made but basically it get like heat sort of sets it into these pleats and it gets quite fixed like that. You can machine wash it and I did do a test piece of this particular one, I washed it at 40 degrees um, with some of my other washing on just a normal cycle and then I air dried it and as you can see it pretty much looks exactly the same, I didn't actually pre-wash the stuff that I made the skirt with um, and the pleats didn't come out at all. Now one thing that you will notice with this particular pleasy is that it does fray, you can see here that it's frayed quite a bit, not all pleasy fabric will do that. I have worked with other pleasé fabric in the past which didn't fray at all so literally you cut it and you could like agitate it and rub the rub that raw edge of the fabric and literally nothing would happen to it so depending on what type of fabric you've got and I guess the way that it's woven and like exactly what it's made from it may or may not fray so that's something to bear in mind and it's going to have quite big implications later when we come to hem it but I'm going to get on to that shortly. So you can hover above the timeline of this video and then you can see at what different part I sort of talk about different aspects of making the skirt. So if there's a certain thing that you want to jump to, just hover along that time bar and you can skip to that section. So the way that I made the skirt was that I basically cut out two rectangles of fabric and I sewed them together to make a tube and then attached elastic at the top. So that's like very simplistically kind of how you're going to be putting this together. So you need your pleasy fabric, you need your elastic for around the top and the elastic is like a feature on this skirt. So we've got a range of the Atelier Brunette fabric, Atelier Brunette elastics in there's two different designs this is like the stripe one and then they also have like an all over sort of gold one so it comes in various different shades so it was the powder colorway that I combined with this colorway of the, the fabric but then for the olive one there's a few different options there is this all over gold one here which does look nice with it pretty sparkly and then we do also have this one which is the cedar striped one and I think that that actually matches really really nicely as well so a couple of options to go with that one <clears throat> and it's a good choice it feels really soft and smooth the back of it's nice you know nice and soft it doesn't sort of feel plasticky or synthetic -y like some other elastics so that sort of does become kind of part of the feature of it. So in terms of kind of calculating the dimensions and then working out what you have to cut out, which will also dictate of course how much fabric you actually need, is that you need to first of all work out the width of the rectangles you're going to cut out. So as I said, I had two rectangles, one for the front and one for the back. Now the idea here when you're making like a gathered skirt in this sort of fabric is that at the widest point of your body, whether that is your waist or your hips, you don't really want the fabric when you put it on to be getting stretched that the pleats kind of come out or that the pleats look stretched out. So really what I would suggest that you base the, the width of the rectangle shape that you cut out, you base that measurement on your widest point. So it might be that your hips are wider than your waist, so I would base it on that or it might be that your waist is wider than your hips so I would base it on your waist in that case. So my, personally for me, my hips are bigger than my waist so my calculations were based on my hip measurement. So I took my hip measurement and I times it by one and a half 
so that was how full the skirt was gonna be. Now you could alter that, you could like times it by two and then the fullness of the gathers would be more, but I'll show you a little video of what mine looks like on and that is like one and a half times my width. So hopefully it gives you like an idea of the fullness that it ends up giving. So yes, yeah, so you've got your hip measurement, you times it by one and a half, you're gonna cut out a rectangle for the front and for the back. So you have to take that measurement and divide it by two. So you've got half for the front and half for the back. And then you have to add on your seam allowance as well. So whatever you would prefer your seam allowance to be, I added on a centimeter approximately um, to, to each seam allowance. So that was two centimeters to each rectangle, a seam allowance at each side. So then that was the width of my rectangle that I cut out. Now, in terms of the length, there's a few different options that you could do. The, this particular fabric is 150 centimeters wide. So if you wanted your skirt to be approximately 75 centimeters or less, then the amount of fabric that you would need to buy is just whatever your, you know, one width of your rectangular piece is gonna be, because then you can chop that in half and that gives you the front and the back. So that's what I did with this skirt. So this skirt is just based on like a full width of the fabric so I just kind of chopped it in half if you wanted your skirt longer than that then it, like a maxi length for example then you would have to buy the width of your rectangular piece you were cutting out times two so that you could get the full width and in that case it might be that you actually just then have one seam allowance that would go at the center back rather than having a front panel and a back panel but I had to have a seam allowance both sides because I was using half the width of the fabric hopefully you're still with me on that one now when it comes to cut out the fabric you need to put it on the table that your surface that you're cutting on and make sure that it is very relaxed and that it's not like hanging off the edge of the table or ideally you don't really want to be cutting it out in a carpet because probably what you'll find is that it sort of sticks in places to the carpet and the pleats might get stretched out a bit so the idea is, is that when you cut it out, the pleats are totally relaxed and sort of, you, can, you might almost want to kind of push them together a little bit. And then you're gonna take that measurement that you worked out for your, the width of your rectangular piece and measure it when the pleats are totally relaxed. So actually, you know, once you stretched out the measurement, we're quite bigger than that. But we're wanting that width of your rectangular piece that I explained to you earlier. That is what you're going to cut out of your fabric when the fabric is relaxed. So just measure along the selvage edge for that. And then once you find a pleat, just then cut down that pleat. So the pleat will be running kind of, you know, enough at a right angle to that selvage edge that you can just cut straight down there. You don't have to sort of like continue to measure it all the way down. So you can just cut down that. And then if you're cutting your piece in half to get the length, then you could just measure from the selvage and then measure like halfway along the width of your fabric and then cut it or you can make a little chalk mark, little chalk line if you wanted and then cut along that. Or if you weren't totally sure what length you wanted it, you could just like cut it longer than what, you know, you cut it longer than what you would, you would your sort of minimum level would be and then once you've actually made it and you've got your waistband on you can always trim it to size after that okay so now you've got your two rectangular pieces cut out we're going to work out the elastic length so you need to just get a bit of elastic we sell it by the half meter so generally like a meter is going to be fine if you get that and then you can trim it down to size so just wrap it around your waist and put it at wherever you want the skirt to sit and bear in mind that if you don't want it to sort of sit like at your high waist or the kind of natural sort of smallest part of your waist which is typically kind of below the rib cage then you need to make sure that it is tight enough otherwise it will kind of slip down a little bit so you want to put the elastic on and make sure that you know you have stretched it a little bit it should obviously feel comfortable but you don't want it kind of loose and baggy make sure that you trim it down so that you've got enough to have a one and a half centimeter seam allowance on it so you're going to sew the elastic into a loop with a one and a half centimeter seam allowance and because that seam will kind of effectively like be on show because the you know the waistband is like visible on the garment you're then going to open out that seam allowance and then can you see i've just top stitched it down at either side just so that it lays nice and flat and that becomes your center back point. So then you're going to quarter the elastic by folding it in half from that point. You can put a pin, which will be, then be your center front, and then 
fold it in half again with the centre front and centre back together and you'll get your quarter point so you can put a pin to mark it there as well. Then you're going to sew your front and back rectangles together so that you've got a loop there as well. I use the one centimetre seam allowance here. Now I think what you have to sort of just kind of expect and I guess except with the pleissé fabric is that it does kind of spring and bounce around quite a lot and when the pleats are quite narrow like this one it is a little bit more forgiving so when I came to sew mine together I tried to flatten the pleats out as much as I could so I put pins in it to try and sort of hold them flat and then as I was sewing it I tried to sort of push the pleats to the side so that it, you know the, the fabric would be flat as I sewed it I didn't really want the pleats to be like folded on themselves and then I was like sewing through, through a pleat as I did the seam it does tend to slip a bit and if you find that the raw edges of the fabric end up like not exactly lined up as you sew try not to worry about it too much you won't really notice because because of the pleats anyway and because it's gathered on top of that the kind of fullness of the skirt is not really going to show that up at all so don't worry if the raw edges sort of slip against each other I think it's probably more important that the pleats are flat as you sew it now you can get pleissé fabric where the pleats are much bigger as in they might you know they might even be like an inch or something you know really quite sort of thick predominant pleats and in that case when you come to sew your side seams you might want to be a bit st more strategic about where you actually sew the seam and try to line the pleats up so that you're almost sewing the seam like on the inside of a pleat so that the seam gets effectively hidden and um, that of course that's just going to depend on the particular sort of width or kind of thickness of the pleats that are in and the fabric that you're using if the fabric does fray like this one you are going to have to finish it off somehow to stop it from fraying even more because as I showed you in the little bit that I washed if you don't that was the hem bit that I hemmed which I'll come to later but it, you know where I didn't um, finish it off you know it, ha it has frayed so once you've done that side seam do finish it off ideally on an overlocker if you've got one but if you've not you know you just have to use overcast stitch on the sewing machine or a zigzag stitch um, and then you are ready to start putting the gathers into the main skirt. So you're going to do two lines of gathering stitches on the front skirt section and on the back skirt section. I positioned them so one was probably about two to two and a half centimetres below the top line. And then the other one was maybe about, about one to one and a half centimetres down. Um, the other thing that I did do on my skirt which also helped because of the fraying situation is that I just left the selvage in place on my rectangles and then that was the edge that I attached onto my waistband so as you can see like on the inside of my waistband it is just like the selvage edge that's there that's not cut off like I didn't cut the selvage or anything so yeah a nice long stitch length in the machine like four and a half to five millimeters really long thread tails at the start and end and then you're just sewing in your your gathering stitches it doesn't doesn't matter too much really at this stage if the pleats are stretched out or not as you do them they're going to be coming out later anyway so once you have got your gathering stitches in you have your side seams to be the markers then you also have to work out the center front and center back so just fold that tube that you've got together with the side seams touching and then halfway will be center front halfway center back so then you've got four points in your skirt tube four points on your elastic loop you're going to match them up and then you've split it into four more manageable sections and that's how you then start getting your gathering stitches in and making them nice and even so you're going to pull on your thread tails ideally the bobbin ones they tend to be a bit looser and I just used like random contrasting color of thread for this like extra thread that I had lying about just to use that up I didn't use matching thread to my fabrics it was coming out later anyway and you do need to really like pull on those stitches to get lots of gathers it is quite gathered because it's pleated and then it's gathered on top of that so just make sure that you get enough gathers in that that little section that little sort of quarter section that you're working in is then sitting kind of flat and what you have to do is think about where you're going to be sewing this the line of stitching on on the exterior here of the elastic and then where you want to position your fabric in relation to that so because I was doing the striped elastic and I was going to do a line above that bottom stripe and a line below then I wanted to make sure that you know my 
I, I was sort of inserting the fabric in far enough that I was going to catch it when I did those two lines of stitching. So what I would suggest you do is that whatever, whatever distance you're going to sew these lines on, obviously if you're doing this one, you've not got the lines to guide you. So, um, you know, you probably just have to like measure that. It's going to be maybe like a, a cent, just over a centimeter. Um, then I would look from the top because you're going to be like inserting this in and pinning it sort of from the inside. Look from the top and make sure that the measurement between the top of the elastic and the top of your fabric is the same as you pin it in. You're going to be sewing from the front of the elastic. So as you sort of line it up at the back, you probably want to insert your pins so that they're on this side of the elastic so they're easier to take out as you sew. So yeah, you're just working your way all the way around and your four little sections then you have all your pins in at 90 degrees to the to the elastic and the selvage and then you'll be ready to sew it on now what i found is that when i did actually come to sew this in place is that i had to keep the elastic relaxed otherwise if i pulled it it would um, make the gathers that i had put in uneven so because you're sewing everything together when the fabric is relaxed you have to use a small stitch length. So I used the stretch stitch on my sewing machine and I reduced the stitch length to two millimeters. And that was after like a little bit of experimentation because if you sew the elastic relaxed with a stitch length of two millimeters on the stretch stitch, when you then stretch it later, the stitches won't snap. If you sew it with a longer stitch length, like three or three and a half millimeters, when the fab when the elastic's relaxed and then you stretch it the stitches will probably snap so if you don't have a stretch stitch on your machine then i would recommend just you'll have a little scrap of elastic left over i would recommend just doing some little tests on that like sewing a line of stitching in and then stretching it and making sure that the stitches can with withstand that stretching because obviously you've got to stretch it to get it on and then it's going to be stretched when it's on your body as well so the first line of stitching I did was just above that stripe of the bottom gold bit there, which is one centimeter above the bottom edge. And then I did it like right on the edge as well, right on the very, very edge. So it's like two lines of stitching and matching thread to the elastic. So really you're gonna need matching thread to the elastic and you're gonna need matching thread to the main fabric as well when you make this type of project. Um, and then that is you stitched it in. So now on to the hemming. And if you've got a plissé fabric that doesn't fray, you're onto a winner because you're actually finished because I would recommend just not doing anything to the hem if your fabric doesn't fray. If it does fray, then from various experimentations, really what I've found is the best way to do it is a rolled hem on the overlocker. Now, if you've not done a rolled hem in an overlocker before, but you have an overlocker, I don't want you to freak out. You can do this, it'll be fine. I'm gonna tell you the settings that I used and if you look in your overlocker manual, it will tell you how to set that up in your machine as well. So the overlocker that I use at home is a Janome. It's the 6234XL. So that is what I will show the settings that I used on that. If you have a different model of machine or like brand of machine or whatever, it may be different, but it will tell you in your, in your machine's manual how to set it up. So I would recommend just getting that out and sort of checking but I will show you how I set mine up anyway. Now, what I did, um, just because I was being like a little bit lazy, was that in order to get the thread matching, you're gonna see this on the finished garment, I had my reel of thread that matched this like background pink color of my fabric, and I actually wound some of that onto two bobbins so that I would then have my three threads. So a rolled hem is gonna be a three thread overlocker. Now, I, I did have enough thread, but it, it was quite tight because you'd have to have like a bit of a practice as well. So probably what I would say is safer is to have two reels of the, of the cotton that matches like your main fabric. And then if you wind some onto a bobbin and that can be for the needle and the overlocker, I'm sure you'll be fine with that. So that was how I got around matching the thread to my fabric. So obviously overlocker threads, you're probably not gonna have a color that exactly matches that. Um, so to set it up, what I did was I took the left needle out, so there was just three threads on the overlocker, and then this was my dials here. So the right needle was set on four, 
and then both the upper and lower loopers were set on three. The stitch length was set on R for roll 10 and then this switch was set to roll 10 as well. And then around the plate of the machine, I removed, like lowered the cutting blade, so you can just sort of twist it out on my machine. And then I had to move this switch here to the R position. So you, there's like a little sort of dial or a knob on the side that you have to press in. And then you can just pull that little lever down to the R position. And then definitely obviously have a little practice. Now, I actually experimented with two ways of how to sew the pleats because if you sew them stretched out, then it has this sort of little fluted effect here. So what I actually did first of all was I sewed the hem but ensured the pleats stayed in position. Now, it did take a while and it was like a little bit annoying to do. And when I was halfway through doing it, I was thinking, why on earth have I tried to do this? But I saw it through. And basically what you have to do is almost like push the pleats into the overlocker as you're sewing. But you have to like constantly stop and lift the foot of the overlocker up. Make sure the pleats are flat and then lower the foot back down again and then sew a tiny little bit because you'll find that as the machine feeds the fabric, it stretches the pleats out. So it can be done, but it does take a bit of extra time and practice and patience. But, and I, I did it because I thought that if I stretched it out, it would be too fluted and it would sort of like kind of fan about all over the place a bit too much. But actually what I found when I did the pleats in that position was it sort of hampered how much the skirt could flow and move because the pleats couldn't stretch out at the bottom. They could stretch out everywhere else. So when you know when you walk and you swish the skirt, the pleats can stretch out, but, but the, the bottom hemline can't stretch out as much as everything else. And actually it just sort of knocked off the balance I felt of the skirt. So then I went on to plan B and I did the same thing again. So just did the rolled hem again, but this time I stretched the pleats out as I sewed it and just opened them out. And actually I found that even though it does flute the fabric out, like you can see that it does have this sort of like fanned out shape at the bottom. Actually the sort of balance and proportions that that gives the skirt and when it's on and it's moving around and it's on you, actually looks better than the pleats being totally straight and flat. So I've shown you both options and hopefully that gives you an idea of what both of them look like so that you can kind of decide for yourself. But it is one of those things that you just kind of have to practice and do some little tests out and then see what you would prefer at the end. But um, as I said at the beginning of the hemming section, if your pleissé fabric doesn't fray, I would suggest just not doing anything to it and just leaving it make life a lot easier and you can just leave it and um, so so yeah I hope you found that useful and that if you do have some place fabric you can get on with making your skirt um, and all of those tips make it a little bit quicker I did think it would be quite a quick make and then I hit the hem situation which has knocked it back but hopefully I've kind of taken out the experimentation for you and kind of given you clear options of what you should do. If you've got any questions feel free to leave me a question in the comments and I can try and get back to you. If you do want a quicker answer and you want like some you know you're stuck and you need more quick specific help it's probably quicker to email the shop or give us a ring and then the girls can help you out or they can get a message to me and I can help you out or help them to help you out. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoy making your police skirt. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, just remember to hit subscribe so you don't miss out on my next video. And I'll see you next time. Bye.